Meet Richard, a middle-aged man living in London during the 70s. His life is dull and uneventful, but everything changes when he discovers the world of drag and cross-dressing. As he begins to explore this new passion, he faces opposition from his conservative family and friends, leaving him with a difficult decision to make. Will he stay true to himself or conform to their expectations? So sit tight and get ready for a cross-dressing adventure you won't forget. The summer of 72 was hot and heavy, and as I walked through the bustling streets of London, I felt like something was missing in my life. I had a good job, a loving family, and all the material possessions one could ask for. But there was a restlessness inside of me that I couldn't ignore. As I walked aimlessly, I noticed a colorful flyer on a nearby telephone pole. It read, Drag Show Tonight, with an address scrawled underneath in bold letters. My curiosity was piqued, and I decided to check it out. I arrived at the address just as the sun was setting. The venue was a small, dimly lit bar with a few tables and chairs scattered around. The air was thick with the smell of smoke and alcohol, and the sounds of chatter and laughter filled the room. I found a seat at the back of the room and ordered a beer. The lights dimmed and a spotlight shone on the stage. The MC introduced the first performer, and the crowd erupted in cheers and applause. What I saw next was like nothing I had ever seen before. A tall, statuesque woman sashayed onto the stage in a glittering dress, her makeup flawlessly done, and her hair perfectly coiffed. She lip-synced to a popular song of the time, and the audience went wild. As the show went on, I became more and more entranced. Each performer was more stunning than the last, and their performances were so full of life and energy that it was impossible not to get swept up in the moment. But it wasn't just the performances themselves that drew me in. It was the sense of freedom and expression that these performers embodied. They were unapologetically themselves, and they didn't care who saw them. It was a feeling that I had never experienced before, and it stirred something inside of me. As the show ended and the performers came out to mingle with the crowd, I found myself talking to a friendly drag queen named Lola. We chatted for a while about the show, and she even offered to help me with my makeup if I ever wanted to try it out. I left the bar that night feeling like a new person. The world of drag and cross-dressing had opened up a whole new realm of possibilities for me, and I knew that I had to explore it further. From that night on, I began to research, practice, and experiment with my own drag persona in secret, knowing that my conservative family and friends would never understand. But it was a secret that I relished, and one that made me feel truly alive. As I delved deeper into the world of drag, I realized that I was drawn to it not just for the spectacle, but because it allowed me to be someone else for a while, someone more confident, more outgoing, more daring, someone I could never be in my everyday life. But as much as I loved this newfound hobby, I knew I had to keep it a secret. My family and friends were conservative, and I was afraid of what they would think if they found out. So I kept my drag outfits hidden in a locked box under my bed and only indulged in my passion when I was sure no one was watching. It wasn't easy living a double life. I had to be careful not to slip up and reveal my secret, always watching my back for fear of being discovered. But every time I put on my wig and makeup and transformed into my alter ego, all those worries faded away. I felt alive, free, and unburdened by the constraints of society's expectations. Sometimes I wondered if I was living a lie, if I was betraying my true self by keeping this part of me hidden. But I couldn't bring myself to give up drag. It was a part of me now, a part that gave me joy and fulfillment in a way nothing else ever had. And so I continued to live my double life, straddling the line between two worlds. The world of the ordinary, conservative man I was expected to be, and the world of the glamorous, daring drag queen I longed to be. As I continued to delve deeper into the world of drag and cross-dressing, I realized that keeping my new hobby a secret was becoming increasingly difficult. I yearned for someone to confide in, someone who understood the challenges and struggles of navigating this new world. It was at a local drag competition that I met someone who would become my confidant and close friend. Her name was Sally, and she was a seasoned drag performer who had been in the game for years, 
I was in awe of her confidence, her stage presence, and her ability to transform herself into any character she desired. After one of her performances, I nervously approached her and introduced myself. To my surprise, she was friendly and welcoming, and we struck up a conversation about the art of drag. As we talked, I shared with her my newfound interest in cross-dressing and my struggle to keep it a secret from my family and friends. Sally listened intently, nodding in understanding. She shared with me her own experiences of coming out as a drag performer and the challenges she faced with family and friends. She offered me advice and tips on how to perfect my look and how to navigate the world of drag without getting caught. Over time, Sally and I became close friends, and she became my mentor in the world of drag. We shared our experiences and struggles, and she helped me perfect my look and develop my own unique style. With Sally's help and guidance, I began to gain more confidence in myself and in my ability to express myself through drag. Having a confidant like Sally was a game changer for me. It was liberating to have someone who understood me and who I could be my true self with. I knew that I still had a long way to go in my journey of self-discovery, but with Sally by my side, I felt like I could conquer anything. As I lay in bed that night, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that filled my stomach. I knew it was only a matter of time before someone found out my secret. I had been living a double life, going out at night dressed in drag and performing in local shows, all while keeping it a secret from my conservative family and friends. I tried to push the thought out of my head, but it was no use. The guilt was consuming me. I couldn't keep up the charade forever. And then it happened. The worst possible scenario played out in front of me. I had been out performing at a local club, feeling confident and alive in my flamboyant costume and makeup. As I was leaving the club, I heard my name being called out. I turned around to see my sister standing there, a look of shock and confusion on her face. I froze, unable to speak. I knew that this was the moment I had been dreading. My secret was out. My sister demanded an explanation and I stuttered out a weak excuse. But she wasn't buying it. She knew there was more to the story than what I was letting on. Over the next few days, the news spread like wildfire throughout my family and social circles. Everyone was talking about my secret life as a drag performer, and I was left to deal with the aftermath. My parents were disappointed and ashamed, my friends were confused and distant, and I felt like a complete outcast. I had always known that my hobby would be met with disapproval, but I never could have imagined the extent of the backlash. I was faced with a difficult decision. Should I continue living a double life, keeping my drag persona separate from my personal life? Or should I come out and embrace my love for drag and cross-dressing, even if it meant facing rejection and judgment from those closest to me? It was a decision that would change my life forever. My mind was in a constant state of turmoil as I weighed the pros and cons of each option. On one hand, I could continue to hide my true self and maintain my relationships with my family and friends. On the other hand, I could finally be free to express myself and live my life on my own terms, but at the cost of potentially losing those relationships. Days turned into weeks, and I still couldn't make a decision. I started to feel like I was living in a constant state of limbo, never fully able to be myself or feel like I belonged anywhere. It was during this time that I started to attend more drag shows and connect with others in the drag community. I found solace in being around people who understood and accepted me for who I was, without judgment or shame. They gave me the courage to finally make a decision. One evening, I sat my family and closest friends down and revealed my secret to them. I explained how much drag and cross-dressing meant to me and how it had helped me find a sense of self-expression and confidence that I had never experienced before. Their reactions were mixed. Some were accepting and understanding, while others were angry and confused. I could see the hurt in their eyes and the disappointment in their faces. It was a painful moment for all of us. But even in the midst of the turmoil, I knew that I had made the right decision. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was living authentically and true to myself, without the weight of judgment or shame holding me back. 
The road ahead wouldn't be easy, but I was ready to face it with newfound strength and resilience. I knew that there would be challenges and obstacles to overcome, but I was determined to live my life on my own terms and not conform to societal expectations. It was time for me to embrace my true self and finally find the acceptance and belonging that I had been searching for all along. Hope you enjoyed this story, and if you're looking for a daily escape into the world of cross-dressing, subscribe now and enjoy new stories every single day.